alaikum and welcome to Making a House a Home on Imam Hussein TV with myself, Ragad Baqir, and our expert life coach and NLP practitioner, Fahima Mohammed, who today will be talking about combating stress. Assalamu alaikum, Fahima. Alaikum salam. Can you tell us a bit more about how you go about combating stress and how you help people overcome this type of anxiety? Yes, um, we have to understand what stress is, and it's actually a, a bio biological response that uh, we need actually sometimes for survi survival. And, um, you know, the stress allows our biological system to sort of prepare itself to do something, either to fight or to run away. So, you know, we might not think of it like that, but it actually does, um, it's a vital need to a certain extent. And um, psychologi psychologists sort of stress that, you know, we often uh, base our individual perception on different situations which can actually make it more stressful for some people and less stressful for others because it just depends how we look at things. So that's why we find that some people can cope with certain situations which are similar a lot better or a lot worse and that's all to do with our perception. So when someone says, oh, you're better at coping with stress, it's not that they're actually better at coping with stress itself, it's just that how they look at the situation. Yes. Um, they look exactly. at it differently. Exactly. Mm. And we have an American psychologist, Julian Rotter, um, who describes this as our locus of um, control. So basically, um, ex externally, it's either the in individual feels that, you know, that, you know, outside environment controls their situation mm -hmm. or they themselves internally can control whatever's happening. So even in life, we might think that, you know, we don't have control because it's the economy or it's because of our parents or it's because of you know certain situations. Mm -hmm. So that's what it just describes. Or there are individuals that feel that no matter what happens in this life, you know, I'm going to take control over certain things and I'm gonna make it happen. But generally, as individuals, we have a little bit of both and we prefer sometimes to use one or the other depending. Mm. So obviously it's, it's nice to sort of feel that, you know, we as individuals have more control regardless of our outs, mm. you know, outside circumstances. Yeah. But then again, it's all psychological and how we look at things, how we feel about things and with that becomes, you know, our actions and our emotions. So it's really interesting to sort of understand what stress is. Mm. And um, I think in life that, you know, we need to also have stress sometimes to actually perform better. Because yeah. when we're under pressure, then it helps us sort of like keeps us on our toes. And for example, if we need to sort of apply brakes, you know, to mm. prevent an accident, you know, that stress mode is something yeah. that keeps us sort of like, you know, up. You I know. guess that's why biologically we are uh, yes. made to stress sometimes. Yes. It just, it's, it's a way of um, survival, I guess. Yes, yeah. it is a way of survival. Yeah, kinda... But I mean, in today's world, it is really, really um, it's testing. It's overriding it's us. Overriding us. Mm. And we need to be a lot more aware of the symptoms and how it can actually overtake, you know, and actually become unhealthy. So we need to take steps to sort of recognizing it. So when we sleep less and we eat less and we don't perform well, and usually it's because it's physically as well that we have to understand, but it comes generally from <coughs> the mind. So when we are aware of that, there are certain steps that we can take in order to control the stress levels. Mm. So it doesn't get to a dangerous point because it can actually have an adverse effect on us in every way, mentally and physically. So you're saying uh, stress can, t can um, affect you physically. Yes. Is that when it stress turns into anxiety or are they two t completely separate things? Um, it can to a certain extent. Anxiety is more about thinking about the future and trying to overcome, you know, what may happen. So that is slightly looked upon a bit different. different. Stress is, uh, it can be also futuristic, but actually it's more about the moment. Mm -hmm. And it's also a worry and a concern as well. So it's a very, you know, thin line between the two. Okay. But there is a distinction between the both. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, you know, sadness and stress and depression and anxiety, all mm. of that has its own sort of like label, mm. um, but it does actually overlap to a certain extent. And I think stress is a very simple formula which we have, which can lead to something even more severe, yes. like depression, mm. because you know, as humans, we form a habit of the way we think and act. So when we uh, are used to being like, oh, we're stressed and this is how we perform and this is how we think, then it's another habit that we're creating, mm -hmm. which is not healthy. 
And that habit becomes more like anxiety, becomes more depression. Mm. So, and that becomes dangerous because we're living in that way because we are humans that, you know, we live through habits. habits yes. So that's why it's important to sort of recognize the stress levels that you have. <coughs> yeah, because a lot of people do um, actually get confused or yes. uh, merge them together, stress, anxiety, and depression, when you're actually saying each of them is a different, yes. a different thing. It is a different thing, mm. but we still can think of it in a way that, um, I'm not trying to say that, you know, if you are strong-minded, you're not going to feel these things. Mm. Because as humans in the moment we're going to feel stressed but it's not about not feeling it at all it's about trying to get out of that feeling so that you don't stay in it for too long when you stay in those sort of like that downward cycle. spiral yeah mm -hmm. for too long that's when it becomes dangerous that's when it becomes the habit that's when it can lead to sort of severe you know depression and sadness and also you know being overwhelmed with the stress, mm. not being able to cope with it, mm. and it taking over you instead of you taking over it. So that's why it's really important how we understand stress, how we know we can use it for our advantage, and how we know that we can actually overcome it for our advantage. Okay. So, I mean, the causes of stress, really, it's quite important to also understand that what causes stress, and usually it's the environment, you know, social standards, the communities, all this expectation that's put upon ourselves okay. from the outside, mm. you know, for, for students or for generally people who, who are professional, the academic pressures, you know, extracurricular things that we feel that we need to do as individuals to sort of perform better, look mm. better, be better, you know, against our peers. You know, we have all of that, the workload that we put upon ourselves, even though we say that, you know, we might have that workload that we cannot get rid of mm. but actually you know we're choosing it mm -hmm. and we we you know we get what we tolerate as well we put up with what we tolerate with and you know the time management not being able to be sort of like you know disciplined not being organized mm. you know those sort of little things that we can actually have control over does make a difference to our stress and so you're saying that we can control our stress levels yeah, by sort of, Becoming you know, being a certain way mm -hmm. in life. Um, stress comes in many forms and in various ways, you know, mm -hmm. with work, school, you know, at different stages in life, whatever you're going through. So things like being organized, you know, being on time. And we always say, oh, we work so late, we work so hard. But then if we just went to bed an hour earlier, and how yeah. many of us say that, you know, we yeah. always say we're going to go to bed early, we don't. And then we get up tired. When you're physically drained as well, and you start the morning like that, then whatever you have to face, the stress is 10 times felt, yeah. it's felt a bit more. So yeah. you've got to understand how your body can handle certain things. Mm -hmm. It's not like you can't handle it, but what pressures are you putting on it in order for you to not handle it, and then it leads to the stress. Yeah. So set yourself realistic targets as well. Yeah. So whatever situation yeah. you're in, you've got to question yourself. You know, even if you're a working mom and you have family and mm -hmm. you've got lots to do, you know, you have to be more organized. You have to sort of certain days, you know, cut back on certain things. You mm. can't do everything every day and be on top of it all the time, mm. you know. And it's the way you, which you look at stuff and sometimes to let things go. I know so it's, it's easier said than mm -hmm. done, but, you know, like I said, it's perception. It's about organizing your time. And only you know that. And when I sit with my clients one-to-one, -one, we go through their day. We see how it can work. And there's always pockets that we can fill with some real, you know, tips and strategies and techniques where we can put it into use. And um, the effects of stress as well. You know, you realize when you're stressed, because some people don't even realize they're stressed because it becomes such a habit. And then they don't realize that they're stressed out and they wonder why, you know, um, they're not feeling very well or they're constantly getting ill or, you know. Just generally depressed. Or yeah. Down. Or they just, you know, their energy levels are down. Mm. So having lack of sleep, you know, you generally have poor eating habits and, you know, lack of memory, mm. you know, difficulty in focusing and concentrating and losing weight, gaining weight. And it can actually lead to anxiety and panic attacks. So when you have these sort of like, um, you know, these sort of um, things that happen to you, you know, this is an alarm for you to sort of like, you know, reassess how you're living, how you're coping, how you're doing things. And, you know, you really got to take the steps because, you know, when it's in the mind and it affects the body, then it affects everything else around you. 
So you're saying that these are alarm bells for you yeah. to slow down or to change something, yeah. rather than which some people look at that and say, actually, I'm not doing well enough. I need to do more. Yes. So mm -hmm. actually, the best thing to do is, is to slow down. A to slow bit. down. Well, then that brings on to my next point as mm. to how to the you know, ways to relieve stress. Mm. And there's various ways to do it. And it depends on the individual. And people are always like, well, we don't have time. Mm. You know, literally sometimes, you know, studying mindfulness and being a mindfulness coach as well, it really, really helps to just focus and be in the moment. And a lot of them say, well, we cannot be in the moment because in the moment it's stressful. But it's all about, you know, your physiology. Mm. Just when we realize that we have to open our mouths and close and breathe, that gives us the pause, the seconds that we need, not even minutes sometimes, the second when we are overwhelmed, always feeling a bit stressed, just to take a minute to breathe and pause. And if you're in that room, wherever you are, which is really a very healthy uh, tip, just focus on anything around you, just to bring yourself away from the stress that you're feeling and thinking about. So if there's a table in front of you, a cup in front of you, just focus on that for a second or two and breathe. And you don't realize how the mind can just switch. Mm. And it can actually boost you back to where you need to be. Can that be said for Salah, for example? Absolutely. And that's what Allah has done exactly. Salah for us five times a day or do to give yourself the break. Day. Just to focus on, on, that, uh, on that Salah, on the Torah, yeah. on the Qibla, and just breathe. Not, not be running around, not be think, you know, we're, we're supposed to not think about anything else. Yes. But, but we actually do a lot of the time, but that's, that's the aim of it, not to think about anything else other than um, just, just breathe. Yeah, it's not just saying to do the Salah, but before the Salah. Mm. So you're preparing. So whatever you do, you prepare yourself and it literally takes seconds and minutes. Mm. So it's really important to understand how these little tips that you can take control over and you can practice wherever you are. You know, they say meditation and being focused, you know, you need to close your eyes, you've got to have an, a peaceful environment and all zen around you. It doesn't mm. work like that. You have to be in a class for where it's chaotic sometimes as a teacher or as a student where the other kids are around you and you've got to like refocus with all the noise and the chaos and bring yourself into a place that you can actually be in control and can pause and you can do what you need to do with all of that disruption around you. That's like an invisible bubble. Yes. You create mm. that for yourself. Mm. And it's not easy. It takes time. It's another habit to create, but it's a healthy habit to create. Mm. And when your mind is now, you know, creating this new habit and you're constantly catching your thoughts mm. each and every time that you go through this, then it becomes natural. It becomes quicker that you can get out of the stress levels and it becomes healthier for your body because you know you are taking control you are in control and you realize actually you know that thought changes the mind changes and with that the language the actions and you know a few seconds ago it was all stressful and all of a sudden that's how the brain works mm. and it's all the unconscious that's, that's you know behind our the mind and you know with nlp as well it's such powerful strategies that could help you overcome with such little small tweaks and techniques but it's all to do with the way in which you think mm. and how the brain works. Yeah. So it's like coming back to the same situation, yeah. but looking at it from a different perspective, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, exactly. You're taking yourself out of it. So mm. we constantly got to take our, ourselves out of our minds, mm. out of our heads, and look at ourselves from an outside perspective. Mm. You know, like we're standing above ourselves or around us, you know, looking outside ourselves. Mm. And even if you're in a stressful job or, you know, you're a mom or a teacher or wherever it may be, mm. you know, we're just constantly focusing on the past or the future. And that creates the stress, the worry, the anxiety and in leads to depression. And that's why it's about really being in the here and now and just being able to breathe. And if you can't focus on the mind, then the way in which you get to your mindset is the breathing technique. And it's so important because a lot of us don't even breathe properly. Yeah. So that's really, really vital. And, you know, in this life, in today's day and age, we always think that, okay, life without stress, you know, at the end of the day should be so much easier because we've got so much to help around us with technology, with the advancements. But actually that makes us much more fast moving. And... Um, the way in which we have to look at life has to change. Mm. We don't need to keep up all the time. We don't need to have everything perfect. We don't have to put so much expectations on ourselves. Yes. And, you know, 
there is the reality that, you know, both parents are working, you know, they're juggling, you know, the children, the families generally, and, you know, basically... curricular activities. E everything. Trying to make the perfect healthy meals, and this, this women, there's women, so, especially women, I mean, yeah. I do say women, but also men, um, put a lot of extra pressure on themselves. We need to be healthy, we need to be a perfect family, we need to be making enough money, um, and it's just, it's just too much for one person or a, a, pair, a couple to handle sometimes. Yeah, we have to change the, our outlook on life. Mm. You know, we, we want the higher standard and the big expectations are put upon us. There's more competition with each other. Mm. You know, all these things add to the stress levels and that's what makes us like want to drive more, want to be on top of our game. And you can do all of that if you can handle it, but if you can't handle it, is it really worth it with your health? And also, you're not giving the time, your reactions to other people, even, you know, the way in which you might be more quickly to be angry or annoyed or irritated. That also, you know, mm. is a sign that, you know, you're stressed out. So you're not dealing with situations in the best way. So you have to find the best way that works for you. And I think the most simplest way as well, a lot of the time, which is we can touch at any moment, is to sort of like be more with nature. Okay. You know, um, Allah has you know, created a wonderful world for us, whether it's rain or even dull like we live in London most of the time. Mm. But we can actually appreciate that, you know, whether we see the, the trees swaying or the raindrops that are falling. But, you know, notice it. Yes. When yes. you notice it, then it's a different feeling. And it doesn't have to be a lovely, hot, sunny day for that. You can really make anything beautiful and wonderful by just having and showing appreciation. So sort of trade the expectation for appreciation. And whichever, you know, sort of point you are in your life, you have to be able to be grateful and patient. That's actually a really great point that you make because subhanAllah, when you look at, for example, the weather, it's very easy to feel down about it and say, oh, it's, it's so dull or it's just so depressing. But then you can look at it from a different perspective and say, yes. subhanAllah, you know, we live in a country where um, it's always quite cold, we're, not, we're never over, uh, too hot or anything. It's no so extreme. It all depends on how you look at the exactly. situation. Exactly. Yeah. And like I said, you can make anything, anything beautiful. And you can try and like, you know, daily uplifts, you know, and, you know, be kind to yourself. You know, take a couple of minutes walk at lunchtime. You know, people go out for, you know, smoke breaks. You can go out for just like fresh air. You know, things like that if you're at work or if you're at school or if you're even at home, open the back door in your kitchen and just look at the sky. You know, that mm. could be refreshing for a couple of minutes. And subhanAllah, when you go out for the smoke break, you're thinking about all the stresses and all the yeah. negativity. When you're going out for a quick break just to walk around, appreciate everything. Look around you. Then you yeah. you're actually bringing in positivity. So it's yeah. all about how you, you how you, look at how things you do and things. How you and we things. have a lot of strategies and tips for this. Mm. And obviously, you know, you have to accept life. You've got to avoid certain things, you've got to alter certain things, you've got to adapt to certain things. So all of these things are really important for you to focus on. And obviously being Muslim, the best way of combating stress, you know, we have the added gift of dhikr. Mm. So that could be done at any time, any moment, just, you know, being grateful and thankful and, you know, saying certain names and, you know, being so like at one with your creator. So no matter what you're doing and just for that second, it'll give you the boost that you need. And, you know, they always say that, oh, if you're depressed and if you're, you know, uh, sad and suicidal or things like that, that, mm. you know, your iman is less and, you know, you don't have um, belief. But no, we're humans. We're going to go through stress. Everyone goes through stress. We're going to go through everything. And I'm not saying that, you know, at the end of the day, if you have, you know, strong iman, you're never going to feel all of these things. You're going to mm. feel it. We're human. But yeah. with psychology today and with the knowledge that, you know, Allah has asked us to sort of create for ourselves and build mm -hmm. continuously because there are ways that we can overcome this and not stay in that for so long mm. so that we, even though we feel it we can definitely overcome it yeah. with the psychology of today and the fact that you know we have our Islam to sort of teach us you know ways in which that would help us overcome this and it gives us another tool which we're so grateful to have. SubhanAllah every human being has to go through a test has to go through a hard time in their life. Yep. So you can't say that someone who, ha who goes through a stressful situation doesn't have Iman. No, Absolutely it's just not. how you handle that stressful situation yeah. is how your Iman can be, uh, can be looked at. Yeah, and we need to go through, you know, the bad to understand the good. We need to have sort of like, you know, sort of like, you know, 
sort of really stressful times to appreciate the peaceful times. So everything is a gift and you know, we have to appreciate it. We wouldn't know what's happiness if we didn't have sadness, for example. So we need to educate ourselves about psychology, the way in which we think, the way in which our human minds are. And you know, the more we have understanding of it, that's when we can cope with it. Just like how when we're raising children, we have to understand the psychology of the development in their different stages. So we can know that they're not just whinging because they're terrible kids. <laughs> they just don't have a way of expressing themselves. And they're having so much emotion for that moment that they don't know how mm -hmm. to, you know, probably, I don't know, use. So that, again, is another way of looking at things. And if you do that with every stage and every step of your life, then just having awareness and interest will get you into a place that you know, when you have that understanding, you can cope with it. You can cope with it really well. And the stress will, inshallah, with everything that you know, the tools that you have, you can actually definitely overcome it and combat it. Inshallah, yeah. And like I said, we all, like he said, we all have to overcome stress one way or another. It just depends on how we look at the situation. Yeah. Um, and Fahima, you've been very, very insightful. And inshallah, all our viewers have managed to get a better understanding on how to combat stress and how to deal with that. Um, and inshallah, we're going to go for a break. And after the break, if you have any questions for Fahima, we'll do our best to answer them. And we'll be back soon. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Making a House a Home. We're back with some of your questions. Fahima, uh, I have a question from Layla who asks, how do I manage my stress levels when I work and have a husband and children to look after who are young and the day-to-day -day life is so hectic? Yeah, I mean, that is a very common sort of, you know, um, issue that we're faced with every single day. And people come to me all the time saying, you know, I don't have time, I'm really busy and this, that and the other. But we do tend to generalize a lot of these things. Mm. And I'm not saying that she doesn't feel it. It's genuine what she feels. But I think to take a step back, and like I said, if I was to work with somebody in that situation one-to-one, -one, is to really analyze how are you managing your day? Mm. You know, being productive, being organized, being sort of militant and disciplined with certain things that you need to do and you cannot do everything every day. You have to cut back or you have to do certain things on certain days and you have to sort of plan your week. I think, you know, all those organization skills really does make a difference. And if possible, to have people to help on, you know, with you, like, you know, your husband could maybe take some time during the week or evenings or whatever it may be to help with the homework or pick up, drop off, if it's possible. You know, there's, there's so many different ways of, you know, working towards this. But when we get overwhelmed, we look at the whole picture and we think the whole picture is bad, but it's not. So if I was to sit with, an, in, in, you know, an individual and analyze their day and work a plan to see, well, what is the real stress? Is it the way you're looking at it? Is it the actual, you know, events that are happening? Can we control certain things and make it better? Is there a better way of dealing with certain things? When it comes to the children, are they all, you know, doing certain things at the same time where it can be separated so you're not being overwhelmed with everything? So there's so many different techniques, so many strategies and tools. And then to work within yourself as an individual. Do you actually take the time out for yourself for like a couple of minutes before you walk in through that door and there's chaos? you know, to breathe and to think and to see that, okay, this is what's going to happen and then and plan it and give sort of advice and delegate. You do this, you do that, this is what needs to be happening so that everyone's separate and to do what they need to do so they're not overwhelming you. So there's so many ways of looking at it and um, I think generally, I think in a home, it is really up to you to sort of make it much more organized. And I know that people that are militant and organized with regards to their planning of how, you know, even if you just prepare your meals for the week and you don't have to think about that, or cook two in one day, for example, so that you're not cooking the following day because that day you're coming late from work, you're not going to have the time. You know, certain things can really make a difference to everything by just being organized and planning and working in advance. And a lot of the time we're not disciplined in that way. And that's the basics of what I can give for that sort of advice. 
But obviously, if I had like a real conversation, getting into deeper understanding, then there are other techniques as well. Right. So once you understand the actual where the stress is actually coming from, mm -hmm. um, and w what her family uh, is like, dynamics, the, yeah. the dynamics are, then you can actually give more yeah. advice, inshallah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mustafa asks. Uh, Mustafa asks. I have a very stressful and demanding job, mm -hmm. so I am always stressed and cannot seem to get rid of my stress. How can we help? Yeah, that is very common as well. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're working in a deba demanding job, um, but then again, you're looking at that job as being demanding. I'm sure if you're doing it, for, there is a payoff and there is a reason and there's a benefit. So, you know, you need to focus on that. And sometimes the language we use can actually make us think that it's demanding when actually you can use it as being challenging. I'm in a challenging job, not a demanding job. So the challenge can be overcome. Whereas demand is more like you're, um, you know, disempowered. Whereas mm -hmm. when you're empowered, when you use different language, yes, I'm in a challenging job. So how can I you know, overcome this. Mm. So then you look at it differently and you'll have a different concept of dealing with it. You might have to be more, you know, creative in the way in which you work your day, you know, and maybe talk to the bosses, talk to colleagues, see how they're doing it. A lot of the times we just see ourselves in a bubble and think there's no one else going through the same things, but there's other people that are actually coping well in the same situation as you. So talk about it. So you can actually find out some information about it. And even generally, even with the scenario before, with the mum that's finding it hard, talk to other people or talk openly about it and you realise actually it's not so bad. We always look at our lives as it's just us, just mm. me. But there's always things that are much worse off. So, you know, to be grateful for the situation you're in and be more than yourself. Do for others more because, you know, the stress that you feel is only when, because you're looking at it just from, you know, your perspective and it's only you. So you've got to open it up into various ways. Firstly, um, I'm not the only one going through this, for example. Or secondly, I'm going through this because there's an end goal. But let me look at it in a way where I can actually, you know, perceive it in a different way. Mm. So that could help a little bit as well with regards to the job. Okay. Um, I have a question from Samaya. Um, and she asks, how do you not get stressed when you have important exams to prepare for and take? knowing that the result determines your future. Yeah, I mean, again, it's all to do with preparation and you have to have belief that, you know, when you're gonna study and plan for something and work towards something, whether it's exams and yes, it's your future, you don't have absolute control over it. You have gotta leave the rest in Allah's hands too. You do your part as best you can. And the stress only goes really far and really out of control when you know that you don't have belief You've got to have a little bit of extra belief knowing I've done all that I can and, you know, the rest is up to you, Allah. You know, you have my future in, in hand, really. You know, even though that exam can be correct, it still may not plan out the way you expected it to go. And that's what normally happens in life. You know, you won't get the result or you get the result and it still didn't lead you to where you wanted to. So we as Muslims, we know that about life. We just need to remind ourselves all the time. Mm. But it doesn't mean that you've got to sort of like, oh, you know, I don't need to study because, you know, Allah's got it planned for me. No, you have to take the, you know, the steps to do your best. But and leave have it. to work on as well. Exactly. So Having can, that faith. When you have to work on subhanAllah, it's like you put the stress onto Allah's shoulders, yes. as they say. Absolutely. You that's know? what I mean. SubhanAllah. Yeah, because mm. you do the best you can do. And that's all that people can ask of you. And you should not have you know, so much of a blueprint. We live in this life, generally, having a blueprint of how our life needs to work out and how it needs to go. When it comes to studies, education, jobs, marriage, you know, the whole package, we want it in a blueprint in that way. And it doesn't work out and one thing doesn't happen and then we get stressed, we get depressed, we get sad because it hasn't worked out because of the way we think it, it should go. Have. Mm. And that's not how life is. And the more we get used to it, saying that even there's a plan, you can have an end goal, but the direction and the planning will change over time. And you just got to go with that. And just know that whatever direction is there for you, and whatever you know, stresses and challenges and tests and whatever may be trials, that you have to do it to overcome that is order, in order for you to grow and evolve and to learn. And with time, everything comes because it's testing you to get to the next stage, to the next phase in life. 
So you can't grow and evolve unless you cross another hurdle. Mm. So that's how you've got to look at it. And don't have a story in your head saying, this is how it's going to be. I'm going to go to private school. I'm going to have this, 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 this. And, you know, it's going to work out like that. Nobody ever does that. And the ones that even have that, like you'll see in Hollywood, they've got the money, the fame, the fortune. Everyone aspires to those things. And then they're depressed and they commit suicide because, again, that's not happiness. Mm. So you have to be very, very careful how you perceive life. And as Muslims, we have the answer. We know the meaning and the purpose of us being here. So mm. we need to be very careful how we do that with everything that we decide and the choices that we make. And don't just think about yourself. When you make life more than yourself and you want to help others and do for others, regardless of your own goals, that's when you can even appreciate whichever stage you're at. And that's what makes you more. Mm. Thank you, Fahima. Um, Noor asks, when you are stressed in the moment, is there a way of getting out of that stress pattern quickly? Yeah, absolutely. In NLP, we have some really, really strong, powerful techniques. And um, generally, for example, I will tell you if you've got some sort of like um, worry or anxiety, there's a, you can help have your hand held out and sort of picture it in your, in your palm, mm. for example. And you picture all of it, and bring it close to you. Okay, that's okay. one technique. And then slowly you tap, 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 tap till it goes to the end mm -hmm. and kind of drop it. And you do that a few times. Mm -hmm. And you'll be so surprised that just by doing that for a few moments, you know, it's kind of like really taking it away. Okay. So, and these are just one or two of the techniques of NLP. Mm -hmm. And there's one of anchoring, uh, which is also like trying to um, basically, you know, have another thought and you know, tapping your shoulder or your elbow and, you know, like a happy thought, for example, so mm -hmm. that whenever you feel stressed or whenever you feel like in a certain way, that will sort of like, you know, bring out that feeling of the happiness because you've, you've sort of like created okay. like a connection. So is that tapping like a reminder, like a reminder yes, yourself? Yes, okay, absolutely. Happy thoughts, happy That's thoughts. an anchor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A lot of people That's do that for different mm -hmm. things, whether it's like, you know, flickering or, you know, raising your eyebrows. Yeah. And it's really powerful. Okay. It works. Okay. Because we just have this all the time. We don't realize. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. when you walk into the kitchen, you automatically open the fridge and you don't know why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the same sort of thing. Okay. So you can create that where you get rid of stress immediately. And also, like I said, you know, before we mentioned about the pores, about the breathing, about just focusing on a different thought and an alternative, you know, in that moment and focusing on something which is in front of you other than what you're going through, that can take away the stress immediately. But NLP has amazing, powerful techniques that, you know, we can use with our clients mm. that can actually, you know, they can train themselves and it's a habit to create and they have control over it. And it's, it's so amazing that they can actually do this for themselves. You know, when you talk them through it and you take them through it, then, you know, they are automatically thinking of the problem which was so big and so small. And there's also another one where you can picture, you can have like a frame of whatever stress you have. It's really a big picture and all of a sudden you bring it smaller, smaller, closer and, you know, it disappears. And for children, if they have like sort of scared of spiders, for example, you make them have an image of the spider. Mm. Then you sort of talk them through it to say, well, now the spider has really long legs and now it's dancing. Now it's acting all funny. And you know, with children, it's really amazing because they can mm -hmm. create that mm -hmm. image much more clearer than what we can. We have to really think because we're always surrounded by different ways. And there's all these filters. But with them, it's easier, but we can learn from them. Mm. And NLP understands the way the brain thinks and the mind works. So these sort of techniques can help you sort of op overcome, you know, sort of like anything, anxiety, depression, to a certain extent, it's an extra tool alongside if you were to have sort of medical help as well. Mm. But it really does work and I find it fascinating. It's very simple, it's quirky, and a lot of people think, oh, it's, it's a bit silly, but try it and it, mm. you know, it can really make a difference. So yes, there's definitely steps to take to overcome stress in the moment, but mindfulness is an amazing thing, to be present. Mm -hmm. Right here, in the moment, right now. Even overcoming fear. What is fear? Right mm -hmm. now, you're not really fearful. But most of the time we have the fear, it's because if we're worried about the past fear that we've experienced, mm -hmm. 
or something that may happen, which is the future thing. So to overcome you know, all of those things, it's really about being in the moment and focusing you know, in the here and now. And that's all we have control over anyway. So that's, you know, all of that is amazing to sort of like have insight of, have awareness of, have knowledge. And when you have that, then you can use it in your daily routine and build yourself a different habit and create a different character and, you know, build different perceptions of things in life mm -hmm. that can make it easier and smoother for you to carry on. And over time, you will train your mind. So when you have depression, when you have stress, when you have anxiety, worry, sadness, you'll flip out of it very, very quickly and easily. Inshallah. Inshallah, anyone who's going through uh, a stressful time, uh, may Allah ease your stress. And inshallah, with dhikr and with iman and with tawakkul, it can get easier. Um, thank you so much, Fahima. It's Welcome. been so insightful. Um, it's, we've, we've all, well, personally, I've learned so much. Um, inshallah, all our viewers have um, enjoyed listening to you. Um, and uh, thank you so much for your questions. Thank you so much for listening to us. And inshallah, we'll, we'll be back next week with another very interesting topic by Fahima. Um, and see you soon. If you've been affected by the following topics raised in this episode, please contact your local GP or Fahima Muhammad on coachfm1 at hotmail.com. Thank mm -hmm. you.